So I got the uh, Cooper ST Maxes replaced with the Nito Ridge Rapplers. And uh, I have to say I'm quite impressed uh, with the difference. Same aggressive style. They were both kind of a cross or a middle ground between an all-terrain and a mud-terrain. I mean, they're not as aggressive as a mud-terrain and they're <clears throat> not as all-terrain as an all-terrain. But it's just a huge night and day difference. And I've talked to a bunch of guys on the full-size Overland forum that have ran the Cooper ST Maxes, and they said they've had great luck. So maybe I just got a bad lot. Uh, I mean, I, I would see it if it was one tire that wouldn't balance properly, but when all four tires won't balance, and they did the road force balance, and they couldn't get uh, they couldn't get them under 30. So maybe I just got a bad lot. Uh, I, you know, I don't know, but. Um, I was talking to one guy and he was saying that basically their entire fleet of vehicles were running the uh, ST Maxes and they would drive, you know, intra or interstate, not intrastate, but interstate. And uh, they had great success and then they had tried the Nitos and the Nitos was, for them, for their application was horrible because the life was just horrible. So, um, I don't know, we'll see. I, putting these Nitos on. It's a smoother ride, it's even quieter, which the ST Maxes were not loud. Uh, but you could hear them a little bit. I mean, you could hear just a hair bit of rah, rah, rah. I will say that the ST Maxes are a little more aggressive uh, in their overall tread pattern than these uh, trail grapplers are. The, trail, the ST Maxes lean more towards a MT, and the Ridge Grapplers lean more toward a AT. Um, you know, and so, I mean, the difference is maybe uh, minuscule, but there is a slight difference there. So, I, I do, I, I will say that I did test out the ST Maxes, and on the off road application, they worked really well. Uh, it's just once you get on the highway, and that's my problem, is I spend, you know, the majority of my time, you know, it, I drive about 80 miles a day. Between I-26 and I-40 on the interstate, going to school every day, and then I only overlay. I mean, I'm a weekend overlander, and so I have to look at that from that perspective, saying that the majority of my driving is on the road, especially on you know not just on the road but on the interstate. So I'm at a, you know high sustained speeds between 60 and 70 miles an hour versus off the road. Now, if you're driving around in town, you know two or three miles a day. Uh, and then you were going, you know, or you lived out, you know, on a farm, and so you were out constantly out in the fields or something like that, then EST Vaxes probably wouldn't be an issue because if I had not had to drive every single day on the highway at 65, 70 miles an hour, I don't think EST Vaxes would have been an issue for me. It's not until you get to that between 60 and 70 mile an hour range that you really started to feel the difference and kind of felt kind of a bounce. I will also say that the ST Maxes at those speeds are a little, uh, a little loose compared to these uh, Nittos, and so. Uh, but I've only had a couple of uh, well, I've only had one day with the Nittos, so I mean, it's you know, I really can't make a complete fair assessment right off the bat. So uh, we'll definitely see. So they got the leveling kit done, and uh, it turned out great. The one thing I did notice when I put the leveling kit on, and I think that if I do, when I do go to Cool Springs versus Cool Spacers, um, the they moved up about two and a half inches. Sorry, I was trying to figure out what this comfort moves to. And uh, the base of the coil stayed the same, but you took that center of gravity of that engine, that diesel engine, which is pretty heavy, and you moved it up. And so now, when you kind of make adjustments so if I'm in you know if I'm going down the highway at 60, 60 miles an hour and uh, I go to the right lane you know fairly aggressively and then you know reverse swoop back over you can kind of feel that front end float a little bit you know and, and that's to be expected because the coil spring is starting two and a half inches lower and so it's just a chunk of metal in between there and so that center of gravity for that engine's higher it's a lot of weight being shifted around and so I think when I go to a full coil 
replacement that that's going to alleviate that. It's not huge. It's not. Um, it, it's it's kind of alarming when you when I very first started driving, just be the simple fact that you know you're not used to it, and so it, it kind of felt really loose. But then once you kind of get used to it and adjust to it, you realize you know it's not. You are not going to lose control of the vehicle, but that's kind of the initial feeling it it gave you. You know because when you would kind of go right, and the whole it felt like the whole truck was kind of just doing this you know but not just just in one just, just did it one time and so once you kind of get used to that you realize that you know it's not that bad but I think that the coil spring replacements will uh, will alleviate that all together because then you have the coil running all the way the, the entire length <clears throat> and so when your vehicle when you're turning and your vehicle shifts to one side that coil is not reacting at that two and a half inch lower, it's actually reacting right there on the spot. And so, in theory, my hypothesis is I won't be as loose in the front end when I go to a full, full replacement. So, uh, additionally, I'm also thinking about instead of going with the Lightner designs, the deck system, and the CVT tent, uh, I'm starting to look into the ARE. Uh, truck cap series, the MX to be specific, uh, with a truck vault. Uh, just because for the money you spend on the entire system, you still have to, if it's raining, you still have to get out uh, on, on, the, on the, the truck tent, the CVT tent. You still have to get out in the middle of the rain, you have to unfold it, you have to get the little stakes out, you have to pop everything up, and so if you look at the room, the amount of room in the truck tent versus the amount of room with the truck cap, you get more room in a truck cap. You don't have to climb up a ladder to get in a truck cap. And you can get one that has, that to uh, you take your tailgate off and it has a, a, a kind of a hatchback to where it comes all the way down to where your tailgate would be and then it has a door in the back. And so you don't even have to, so if it is raining, you just pop the entire hatch up and you've got an instant awning. Um, or if you need to hop out real quick in the middle of the night, use the bathroom or something it's got a door on it so you don't have to hop a whole pat or pop a whole hatch you just open that door hop out do your business and get back in so uh, really looking at that <clears throat> just for ease of use it's also multi-use you, know, you can use it to haul anything in that you want to get wet you can keep you know tools in the back of your truck at all times you know it's a secure option for the bed of your truck with, but still that MX series is raised four inches from the uh, standard truck cap and so you, uh, you really don't lose storage capacity of your bed. And they also make a motorized system that actually raises the bed up on all four corners. And you can put a tent in there. So you can almost, you can stand up in the back of your truck uh, with that. Or if you just want to remove it all together, you uh, raise it with that system and then you can, they make a system where you can hook on like to the top of your garage and you can just uh, quickly unhook and then drive off. You know, I won't be doing that because I really can't fit my truck in my garage. Not because it won't fit, but just because <laughs> my garage is, I've turned it into a little shop and so it's not really feasible to drive into it. But So that's kind of what I'm looking at. Um, I, I don't have a whole lot of experience with uh, truck caps. I never really had a truck cap before. And you know, they're, they're not cheap, but they're not expensive when you compare it to, you know, I, for the deck system, I was gonna spend $1,300 for the Lightner Designs um, cargo active cargo system. I was going to spend $1,600 for the tent, uh, the four-person CVT variant. It's $2,200, $2,300. And so when you start adding all that up, you know that's that's a substantial amount of money. When I could just, but they're all individual components that require their own maintenance, that require their own individual setup to whatever degree. Whereas if I went with the ARE MX with uh, a cargo rack on top of the MX and with their truck vault system, which is basically the same thing as a deck system, um, I'm, I'm just, it's all in one package and it's comparably priced. Um, I don't know the exact price yet, just for the simple fact that I haven't gotten the quote back. <clears throat> I built my own truck cap on ARE site and I hate how they don't tell you how much it costs and you have to send it off to a dealer local dealer and then they have to give you a quote and the local dealer puts their price their markup on it and they put their install on it and so you know when the whole system may have been you know three thousand dollars you wind up spending five thousand which that's what I'm anticipating about five thousand dollars 
And then the other option I was looking at was, and I don't remember the name of it off the top of my head, uh, but I'll throw, a, a, I'll throw it up on the screen here, is a system that, it's an aluminum truck cap, and it's got a built-in roof top tent into the truck cap itself, and so it just opens up. <clears throat> and it's a company out of Arizona. Uh, again, I'll throw up the, uh, the website you know, on, on the screen here. But it's a really neat system, and you can have it custom built, and you can have it pretty much made how you want. So you can sleep in the bottom in the truck cap, or you can use a truck cap to haul cargo, and you can kind of have whatever length you want on the truck cap as far as it's, it's how tall it is. And then the, the, just the top of the truck cap just opens up and turns into a, a, t a rooftop tent. And uh, Overland Expedition, I think that's the name of their, their group, uh, that's what they use. But base price starts at $8,600. And so whenever it's something like that says base price starts at $8,600, um, pretty much once you configure it the way you want to, you're looking at ten dollars to $12,000. And again, do I, I mean, if, if a truck cap will sleep four, easy. Um, when it, you know, I only have a six and a half foot bed, but when you've got that truck vault in it, it makes the entire bed flat, so you don't have to deal with the humps, and so you can put a queen size mattress back there. And normally I'm only gonna be sleeping two, just me and my daughter, because my, uh, my wife and my other daughter aren't as enthusiastic about you know going out as I am, and my youngest daughter is. <clears throat> so I mean, do I need, Ten thousand dollars invested in a truck cap that's normally two thousand that just has a rooftop tent that folds out on the top. You know, and I think the answer to that question is no. I don't. It, is it? Does it have a, a cool guy factor to it? Yes. I mean, it's, it's it's really awesome. I mean, I would love to have it. I just don't think that it's worth the investment for me personally. It's just not something that I think is going to benefit me if I want it. And the other thing to that is to sleep four in that, only two get to, can sleep up top. And the other two have to, you have to turn the bottom into a, a bed system where they sleep at the bottom. But really their system is designed for one or two people. And it's designed to have a kitchen and an office and a whole bunch of other stuff. It's kind of, you know, it's a very good use of space, but that's just not what I need. Uh, you know, I'm not looking for a, a mobile office. You know, I'm not looking to spend year at a time out of my vehicle but with the truck cab I you know that I'm, that I'm looking at the RE MX you know I could do that uh, and I also have the benefit of having a mega cab so I have a lot more space in the cab itself so uh, if I fold my back seats down I mean I can fit a cement size mattress back there so you know I, I have versatility in my truck you know and so a lot of the guys that were running that stuff were running you know Toyota Tacomas uh, so you know mid-sized vehicles and so that's why they had to have Kind of that setup. So anyway, <clears throat> that's kind of my um, where I stand right now in terms of what I'm going to do on the on the build. I do want to kind of have everything finalized in the next 45 days or so. I'm just kind of weighing my pros and cons because I want to make one decision that you know I'm going to be ultimately happy with. It's going to have dual utility. It's not just going to be an overlanding vehicle. It's not you know just going to be a vehicle that I can haul stuff in. It's going to be of both of those and that's what I need I need utility in my vehicle for both daily use and for going out you know in kind of a weekend overland capacity so I got the uh, the lift done or the leveling kit done I'm gonna keep it on for at least two more months and take it out and test it and then I'm gonna you know do some footage and, and do some more reviews on it and um, and then you know I'll keep track of these tires and let you guys know how these tires are doing but again I mean, they, they don't, those Coopers were, would walk quite a bit on the highway, and you, know, you let go of the steering wheel, you know, and it would kind of take off walking, I'm in a turn right now, so I had to get back on it. But these Nitos, I mean, they ride just like the factory tire. Um, you don't even know they're there. And, you know, they're 295, 70 R18, so they're a 34 inch tire. And uh, oddly enough, they're extremely wider than the, uh, ST Maxes, the Cooper ST Maxes are, I would say almost a half inch wider than the Cooper ST Maxes. So it's always unique, you know, or, or interesting to see how unique each tire company is and how they do their sizing. Uh, and so I just think that the only concern I have for these Nitos is going to be the life of the, of the tire. 
Um, you know, but I've seen mixed reports, and also it's what you use it and how you drive. You know, you drive like an asshole, you're gonna eat up your tires. You know, if you drive like a grandpa, you know, you're, they're gonna last you a lot longer. And so, I'm probably in between that. I probably don't drive like a grandpa, um, but I probably do sometimes, and I probably don't drive like an asshole all the time, but I would say I do kind of drive like an asshole more often than I do a grandpa, so, you know, it's that fine balance. So anyway, we're going to do one, we're either going to do the Lightner Design System in the tents, or the MX Series in the next 30 days, and, uh, you know, once I make a decision, you know, probably once I make the order and everything, I'll, I'll do an update video, and... I'll see you in the next video.